Okay, this is gonna be a fun one, a different one. I'm gonna do something a little different than I've normally done. Uh, it's gonna be a complete and thorough overview of all the train stuff I got, um, top to bottom, not just the model trains, but all the other stuff I got too. So if you're curious on what I all have here, um, stick around, because this is gonna be a pretty thorough review. Um, now, I did a thorough, thorough review of all the Legos and everything uh, on my Lego channel, which is Lego My Legos. I'll link that in the description below if you're curious. Um, I go into more depth on everything else I have, not just the train stuff, but uh, everything across the board. That's all throughout the, 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 the place here. Uh, but this one, we're specifically going to focus on the train stuff. So, with that said, first and foremost, the layout itself. Um, I've been doing this for about five years and have collected quite... A mass of not only model train stuff but Legos, obviously, to theme it out, if you will. There is just over 230 some odd feet of track in one continuous loop um, that's zigzagging all across my living room here. And you'll see this Japanese bullet train is currently on right now, uh, making its way on by nice and smooth and quiet like. But, uh, so obviously it starts over here, kind of, and then comes this way, goes into the TV, back up and around the Disney castle on this way, and then it goes through this triple reverse loop, back and forth, zigzagging back over here, and this way, coming on back, and then back around uh, the back, and then up and out, all the way across, um, behind the couch, <laughs> and then down to, well, over here. Where I got this tiny little town that's not made of Legos, but these are the Lippy full sets. Um, so the train kind of comes up this way and loops around and then on back. So that's the layout itself. Uh, kind of had it static like that for eh, a couple of years now. I don't really see myself changing it too much. However, I noticed when I was looking at it, this double track can be split and you can drag some track across this way and then connect to this loop here uh, as a double one on one side and one on the other and then you'll have two independent distinct loops going around the living room as well which I do on occasion uh, if I want to change things up and make it uh, you know a little bit different and uh, able to run two trains at once because I don't have DCC it's all DC set up because I don't want to I just don't want to get fancy with it I just want to run the train here and there and just be able to the goal was always, always to sit down on the couch, watch a movie, and have a train run by, nice and quiet-like, um, which it does currently whenever it comes by. Uh, but obviously, you can look over this way, and it's running over there. You'll see it in the background. And because it zigzags back and forth so much, it's it's almost constantly in your view until it leaves and then comes back sometime later, um, you know, to view view. Uh, view when it comes back but no matter um that's the dream and it seems to be a reality but there's more train stuff to be had for example uh hopefully it's not all backlit but up here i randomly found this at an estate sale it is a train pin crazy super long uh picture of the uh 1996 atlanta olympic pins was a pretty good price and a very unique item so I couldn't pass that up and stuck it up there um, for safekeeping even though when I first put it up it actually crashed like a couple months later on down and uh, luckily I was building the Hogwarts castle at the time over here um, and it's a pretty big box and I set it up on top of the London Bridge for reference um, and so that picture actually came down and crashed on top of that box which very much weathered the blow. I mean, there was almost nothing that was destroyed down here. Uh, there was a little piece, a couple pieces from this thing that was off, and it, it was not bad at all. I expected the worst when I heard it fall. And if that box was not on top of the London Bridge, the London Bridge would have been obliterated. <laughs> but luckily it was not, and, and everything was just still all good. Back in the back here, I do have a UP Lego train that I put together fairly recently. Uh, if you're curious, you can again check out my Lego channel because I think that's where the 
video lives on the Lego My Legos channel. Uh, power box, this is where my power box lives for the train set. In fact, I had an old power box uh, that was I thought was like going bad, so I got this new one, and I tell you what, it works a lot better than that other one. Because before, like on these lights, you can see this train has lights, and the lights would flicker like mad, uh, even fa at faster speeds than this. This one, like, I can literally even, like, stop it, and the lights stay on, which is amazing. This did not happen with the old power box, so I think this newer version has some kind of, like, different voltage or something that allows that train uh, to not flicker anywhere near as much as it used to, so I'm very, very grateful for that. Uh, a couple sets I got for trains is this little guy right here. Uh, nothing too special, it's just something I put together one day, and it's living there for now until I find something better. You'll also see throughout the layout, I have, uh, Thomas trains, so there's Percy right there. There's some other thing in the back, back there, I don't know what that is because I think it or she or he, whatever it is, came about after I grew up and stopped watching Thomas. Um, because I don't remember that, that one from a kid, I don't even remember his name. Uh, at all, but I, I want to say it's a girl, I, but I could be wrong. James lives over here. He's not my favorite model. For some reason, he just looks off uh, compared to like Percy, which is like bang on perfect. And then of course, over here, you have the one and only Thomas himself, which again, looks really good. Uh, you know, as this little tiny like Lego build. <laughs> Uh, sort of a train reference is on the Back to the Future Lego Skyline. Uh, down here you have the Back to the Future train itself in a miniaturized form. It's not the best looking thing in the world, but I guess it's the reference that counts. In fact, you get a mini one right here, and then the bigger one where it's flying right there. Uh, up over this way across the living room into the kitchen, I put together this guy at some point ago. It's like a 3D puzzle build. All the good little gears work. So like when you spin the key or the, or the there's like a wind up thing that you can do and then all the gears and wheels spin and it's, it looks really good in motion. But I just kind of stuck it up there for now. Uh, over here, I have a Disney uh, type <laughs> uh, Lego set. It's massive. And I didn't know where to put it on my layout because it's just so big. So I kind of stuck it up on top of my kitchen kitchen cabinets. And that's where it's going to live for a good while until I figure out what else to do with it. But I think it looks decent for what it is and it's going to live right there. Uh, over here, this, this was a pretty good find. So I recently purchased this from a, a large estate sale. And when I say large, I mean, this was like a $6 million house. And I went on 50% off day. Somehow, I found this tin Christmas train, which looks really cool, right? And it's, it's nice and big and neat. And you look at the price, I thought that said $16. So I'm like, okay, 50% off, it's gonna be eight. But in reality, it's actually $6. <laughs> and I only paid $3 for this, which is great, right? Like it looks awesome, it's made of metal. Even on the bottom it has the original sticker price of $16.99. And even that was marked down from, what is that, 20? 23 and it looks like something that's probably from like the late 90s maybe early 2000s so with inflation that was probably a 30 35 dollar set thing <laughs> that i somehow got for three bucks and nobody else purchased before me so as a cool little reference i thought i'd, <laughs> I'd talk about in the video here all right over here uh if you saw one of my latest ones Something's happening. Hmm. Uh, I recently put together this uh, desktop layout. It's just a temporary thing and I can always take it down if I want. But it's really cool because you get the train running around. Uh, you get a little bit more up close and personal view of it versus the one that's hanging out, you know, way far away on the other side of the living room there. So I'm really liking this for sure because you can be on your computer, you know, typing away or something and then all of a sudden the train slowly rolls by real nice and smooth like. <laughs> and I really like it. I'm liking it a lot more than I thought I would. 
because it just it just works so well. And because this is just a tiny little layout that just circles around and goes around and back, um, I think it works quite nice um, to get that closer view of you know an engine rolling by when you're on the computer. This was something else I recently found at a antique store. It's a HO scale no fork Southern engine. Really cool case. I think that's what sold it for me. And uh, I don't know what else to do with it. I just kind of stuck it there for now, but it looks really neat. <laughs> so yeah, there it is. I did get a little bridge, the Cato bridge, to so the wires from the computers can go all up and over it. And then over here, I bought some cheapo tunnels again. I noticed there was like this little V, which is perfect for wires. So I got a two pack of that and then stuck the, you know, the train goes through the tunnel and then you can put the wires over the top of it. So you don't have to deal, deal with that. And it works out really, really well. Uh, another train set I have over here is the, uh, the steampunk Lego set. Uh, everything moves, so like when you spin it, the wheels, uh, you know, all the gears and everything spins around and it can look really neat, uh, for sure. I also have, in terms of Legos, the, uh, crocodile. And it's all lit up up top here. That kind of brings me to my actual model train display cases. So, uh, if you notice, <laughs> I went a little crazy and have quite a bit. But it looks really good, all stacked together like this. Um, on this side, you'll see all the Europeans engines. I kind of try to do this in by region, but obviously like this guy's an, uh, an American one. I just don't have the space for it, so it's got to cross over. But for the most part, you got American or Europeans over here. You got American engines up top over here. And then the last one over here is uh, the Japanese sets. These are all on custom made Lego display cases. So if you notice, these were like the first Legos I, I bought actually before I bought any of the scenery ones. Uh, I, got, I custom designed these out of Legos because I needed a display case for this for the, the case itself to put the trains on. I'm like, you know what? I bet I can design one out of Lego. So I, I, I designed it using their Lego designer and then bought all the pieces I needed online from the Lego website. And it worked out really, really well. Um, you can see how they stack up and it just it just works out phenomenally. Now, all the ones that are colored, I actually used my childhood Legos for. Um, all the ones in black I bought from lego.com. So like you'll see this one is all multicolored. Those are pieces I stole from my parents' living room or my parents' basement uh, in a big tub I had from all the Legos as a kid. Um, but in terms of other things I have, like here's some really old school 80s style uh, coach cars, they have, they have lights in them too, or at least some of them do. I think half of them have lights. The quality is just off the chain, and I really love these so much. Um, they look really, really good, and they complement a lot of the other things I have. Uh, I got some other passenger cars, some large freight cars down here, and then down below is even more um, like the Oriented for Express cars. You got some other old school German ones. And then these Arnold ones down here, which are real nice. And then I keep a lot of other randos down at the bottom with some cases. In the American case, you have some more freight cars in the middle here. So there's a look at all that. And then down below, more passenger cars, UP excursion cars, and some really cool purple ones from Germany. Rheingolds, uh, they have lights in them too. Over here in the Japanese case, you're going to get a lot more Japanese engines. Uh, Japanese bullet trains, Shikishima, another bullet train. So that's that case. I, I eventually want to get rid of probably these guys and make a room for the Twilight Express, which I just got. There's a whole other video on that, which we'll see probably right before this one. Uh, down here are some more Japanese uh, cars and passenger cars and whatnot so yeah that's <laughs> that's quite a lot of model trains all end scale 
I love it. It turned out really nice. I love the look. I love the display case. It's just, it's, you know, hashtag life goals. This is, this is, you know, a goal. I don't know if it was a goal, but it was a desire in my youth. And when, you know, five-year-old me would freak out if he knew that I was going to have this stuff, you know, in the, in the future. <laughs> and uh, it, it turned out real good. As I may have mentioned too, in one of my more recent videos is I'm starting a Thomas wall. So if I zoom out a little bit. So this is gonna be weird and awesome Thomas art. And you can already see what I got. There's a hand painted Sir Topham hat that I got from some dude who, who made it in England. Uh, shipped it over here, bought it on Etsy for, I think it was only 20 bucks, so it's totally worth it. But yeah, I'm really liking that. This is an old school Thomas poster from 1991 looks amazing the color is just off the chart poppy uh it's quite awesome and then down here i got some other things i haven't put up yet which is a cross stitch of james and then uh ooh, camera's going nuts and then uh a crazy original thomas from one of the original books <laughs> that's quite the face and uh it's going to be framed and popped up here at some point uh, whenever i get around to that Okay, almost done. Got a few more things to show. Uh, we'll start over here on this wall. This is the Ertl Thomas the Tank Engine. Mint from like the early 90s, like circa 91, 92, 93. That's when these are from. I had some of these as a kid. So this is like a huge nostalgia trip that I recently started recollecting to try to find them all in mint condition so I can hang on the wall. Um, I really like this. I really like how they look on the wall. And in fact, I just bought... Uh, Gordon and Henry, and they're gonna go right up on there. I got another crazy little Thomas up here. <laughs> Look at his face. It, it's really cool. So I, I got that. You can change his face, put in some other uh, expressions, but I like this one the best, and so that's, that's what it's gonna stick. Stick like. Uh, over here's another little mini wooden one, kind of like the other one on top of my kitchen, but this is a much smaller one. That looks really nice, you know, all up in there. Here I got some metal models. Some of them are trains. So they're probably like Metal Earth, I think is a brand. And there's some other ones up in here. Um, there's another train right there. Um, looks like I got two, two trains. Wait, there's a Disney, there's a Disney one somewhere. Oh, right in front of me, <laughs> the steam one. I was pointing to the electric one in front of it before. So that's technically the Disneyland Steam Railroad car and then you got an electric one with a coach car and then this steam engine over here which I think is the what does it say Hogwarts it Hogwarts Express is what this one's supposed to be but along with the, all the other models looks really good um, so the wall the, the shelf is really filling up which is nice these are the N scale uh, Tomics Thomas the tank engine cars they work they go on the track um, and in fact, I naively thought that this was my first display case I bought. <laughs> I thought it would be well fine for all, all of my N-Scale uh, collection when I first started collecting back in 2017 or so. And oh ho ho, was I well off of that <laughs> because I needed this and I'm, I'm still out of room. I need more because I can't put uh, the Twilight Express up yet or some of those other tram cars I recently got, so... Ugh, I, I, I'm feeling I might need a fourth case here, which is unfortunate, but <laughs> no matter. Uh, other train references. I found this little, like, pewter train one day at an uh, antique store. I thought that was really cool, so I bought that. A couple books on the side here, uh, including Thomas on the Moon, which is just such an outlandish thing. But it's false advertising, because if you actually read the book... Um, he does not go to the moon. He goes to like a science fair and like stands in front of like a green screen that's like supposed to be like he's on the moon. And I'm like, that's extremely misleading. I really like the idea of Thomas blasting off in a rocket and landing on the moon <laughs> and putting around up there uh, like a boss because that would have been phenomenal that would have been an amazing story but no they cheaped out and he just goes to some dumb top, uh, science fair that some high school kids put on Ugh, real disappointing 
Uh, down here is another Thomas I got. <laughs> Thomas the bus. <laughs> Which is, again, part of that weird and Thomas, weird and awesome Thomas collection I'm starting up. Uh, it's kind of crazy that he's in bus format. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, over here is a tiny little Ertl. Um, I actually had this as a kid. It's, Tom, Percy's face has fallen off long ago, but um, it's you know over 30 years old now, and it's part of these same kind of sets, die cast and all. And I recently discovered him when I went home digging through some Lego boxes. Uh, he was inside, so I'm like, ooh, I'm going to take him and give him a new home on my shelf. <laughs> all right. That brings me to the grand finale. And I hope I'm going to blow your mind with this because my mind is still blown that I actually have this. And you may have seen it when I passed by before, but it is this thing right here. Now, do you have any idea what this is? Maybe it seems familiar. Maybe you know what this is. Maybe you have no idea what this is, but I can tell, guarantee you, you've probably seen this before, whether you know it or not. This is, no joke, the exact, well not the exact, but the same thing that is that has been on Mr. Rogers' set for over 30 years in his back wall. And watching him in the early 90s, like, I wanted this when I was like four years old. I wanted that picture of the trolleys. Even though I don't really like it that much, like it's nothing special, it's just a bunch of pictures of trolleys. But... The fact that he had it on his wall, and that's about the time I started really liking trains. Like, I watched Mr. Rogers, I watched Tom's the Tank Engine, obviously, and this was on his wall. I was like, one day I want to get that. And this was me, like, four years old. And every now and then I look to see, you know, can I find this? How am I going to get this? What in the world? How are you ever going to find, find one with this stuff? And I'm poking around one day online and I stumble up across a listing for these vintage trolley cards because that's what they are it's a pack of like seven in fact to prove to you that these is not some dumb modern repop and the real freaking deal here is the original box that they came in and you can see it's a pack of eight and Mr. Rogers only used four of them and I made sure that they were the exact same four that he used on his wall um, you can see also that the copyright date is 1953. So these are 70 years old. And I literally just found this like two months ago. And it's incredible, right? Like, there it is. Color prints of early American trolley cars. You can tell this has patina. This is legit from the 50s. And the listing didn't mention anything about Mr. Rogers at all. So I am quite certain they had no idea what they had. It was only $20, so I could not believe that I found them. And here's, you know, here are some of the other ones that they come with, um, just to kind of show what you've never seen before, because you've only probably ever saw those four on Mr. Rogers. But, uh, yeah, Un it, it blows my mind that I was able to find this. Um, so, of course, when I did get them, I took them up and got them custom framed into a frame as close as I could find like the one on Mr. Rogers. And again, mind blown that I have this because I got a lot of cool stuff, you know, across the living room and across the kitchen and over here. But I gotta say like, this is the coolest thing I have. Like no joke, this is the number one thing because it's legitimately the real deal. <laughs> And it's such a nostalgia trip. And Mr. Rogers to me is like one of the greatest persons like who ever lived. And to actually have a piece of that history and that I was able to obtain these as a childhood dream of mine too. Like it all just worked out so perfectly that this is actually a thing that I have. I can't even like begin to imagine what this kind of thing is actually worth to like real people who know what this is and you know it's not his exact one on the set that was there for all 30 years starting in 1968 all the way up to 2003 and is now in the mr rogers museum in pittsburgh or wherever it is but it's the next next best thing because it's it's the le legitimate <laughs> cards from that era that he used 
to create that picture and then put it up. So I am, I am, like I said, I, I don't even know how to describe how I feel about this. Like I am blown away, just completely blown away that I, I have, because how many of these have survived even? 70 years, I, they're just pieces of paper. It's incredible. Like, how many of these could possibly, A, to even be printed and sold to begin with? And then how many of those have survived all this time? So that one day, you know, I could stumble upon it 30 years after looking, you know, from a kid and and find it exactly, exactly, exactly what he has and had on his show. So, yeah, grand finale for sure. Hopefully you think so, because, like I said, it's... It's the, it's the best thing I own right now. I, 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 I would not give it up for hardly anything. And well, it was a long one. Hopefully, uh, you found it at least a little entertaining. And if you stuck it out for the whole thing, you know, hats off to you because <laughs> this is quite a long video. Um, there's a double train right there. Like I said, hopefully you enjoyed. Maybe even a little inspired by what I've been able to do here. And I hope, I hope you can appreciate what the heck this thing is, because <laughs> I'm, I'll say it again, I'm blown away that I actually have this and displayed and framed. So I'll cut it off there. I probably talked way, way too much. <laughs> like I said, hopefully you found it at least a little exciting and entertaining. But stay tuned, because there's always more around the corner. And uh, as you see in my display case, there's a lot of trains here and a lot of stuff I have yet to even touch as part of a review. So the plan is to get to them eventually. So one day, uh, they'll all be done. <laughs> but for now, I'm going to end this one here and just hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for, of course, more. <laughs>